Pastor Sunny. Thank you. Can, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Loud and clear. Okay. Uh, good morning to my uh, colleagues in PIDS, President uh, Orbeta, my friend, Dr. Ruel. And, and good morning as well to our online participants and, of course, to my co-discussants. Um, it is indeed a privilege to be invited to share my thoughts on this paper on the baseline uh, survey of the DTI Re Regional Agro Enterprise uh, Partnership for Inclusive Development and Growth or Rapid Growth Project. Uh, actually, a project that covers areas that I'm interested in, such as the use of value chain approach in agro-enterprise development and innovative strategies such as the commercial partnership agreement and uh, matching grant to contribute to enhancing inclusivity, resilience, and sustainability in agri-food chain. Sorry, I wasn't able to uh, prepare a PowerPoint presentation. Ang haba ng paper, Dr. Well, 60 plus pages. <laughs> but hopefully the points I will raise will uh, trigger or um, stimulate discussion on the paper. First of all, I would like to congratulate the authors of this paper um, for a job well done. Uh, I'm not uh, surprised, in fact, to be honest, given the experience of PIDS and the authors in uh, impact evaluation of development projects, including those in the agri-food sector, such as this DTI Rapid uh, project. There's definitely rigor in the methodology used, such as the sampling design and uh, analytical models to assess baseline situation and project impact. I also appreciate the balanced uh, presentation of findings of the project situation or status at baseline, presenting both uh, the positive uh, findings as well as flagging issues and limitations of the data, including concerns on the initial uh, implementation of the project. Ruel, this is, uh, I think, extended up to 2027. I, I will try to add uh, value to this discussion by focusing on uh, a few insights uh, or points, particularly on consolidation or clustering strategy of the project, and, um, and also suggest possible analysis from the data. So consolidation and clustering of farmers is, uh, I think one of the key strategies of this project, of the DTI Rapid project. We can see this in the project design, targeting farmer organizations and MSMEs participating in different nodes of the chain, um, not only in the production node, but uh, also in the processing and other nodes in, uh, in the chain, including marketing. Sorry. Uh, Yes. Um, in most cases, they act as uh, consolidators. In fact, this consolidation function of farmer organizations and MSMEs is reinforced or enhanced through the commercial partnership agreements. It is also reflected in the intermediate outcome of the theory of change, that is the uh, colla collaborate actions and partnerships between and among uh, value chain stakeholders executed. But this outcome, uh, intermediate outcome, is not achieved if volume produced by farmers and MSMEs is not consolidated for the buyer or meet the volume requirements of the buyer. And consolidation is through clustering. Table 37 of the paper shows the different clusters by chain based on the total hectares. I think this is an important topic to discuss because the analysis of the data using both uh, baseline and eventually endline data can shed light um, into how we can use the strategy more effectively. There are existing consolidation and clustering programs or strategies being implemented by government and development partners. For example, the DA issued uh, administrative orders on consolidation and clustering strategies. Uh, one of these is the AO number 25 series uh, of 2020 on establishing farm and fisheries clustering and consolidation program. This is the F2C2 uh, program. Uh, there's also the DA uh, AO number 27 um, series of 2021 on uh, strengthening the inclusive 
um, agribusiness development program through ABCs or the Agro Industrial Business Corridors. And there's an an, o, an AO in 2021, AO25, that uh, integrates these uh, strategies in um, uh, into one DA agenda um, that also include uh, BAC, uh, not, the, not the Bids and Awards Committee, but the Bayanihan uh, Agro Cluster, and, and, and VCC, not blind carbon copy, but the value chain cluster. <laughs> and of course, you have a granny for clusters of DAR and DTIs, industry clusters. So this consolidation strategy has been widely implemented in, in various development government programs because it makes sense. Uh, our farmers are fragmented and uh, they produce small volumes. So this makes marketing less efficient. Uh, including delivery of extension services that includes uh, business development services. The DTI Rapid project, for example, uh, volume requirement is a critical requirement for market access. But this consolidation uh, strategy is, is also implemented at different scales, and I should say at varying degrees of effectiveness. For DTI Rapid, it covers... Uh, small from zero to 50 hectares to large clusters over 200 hectares. There are also very small clusters like eight to 15 farmers covering uh, less than five hectares, like those organized by the Catholic Relief Service under the Small Farmers Marketing Program. Some of the suppliers of, uh, I think one of the participants here is Jollibee, uh, one of the suppliers of Jollibee Foods Corporations are from this uh, type of clusters, the small ones. Uh, compared to F to C to of B A clusters are based on the type of commodity. For perennials like coffee and cacao, the size of clusters is at least 100 hectares in the F to C to guidelines. So some clusters and the DTI rapid fall under the F to C to category. As mentioned, effectiveness of implementing this strategy also varies, uh, particularly in increasing income of farmers. And the factors that affect this. Uh, or its degree of effectiveness are, are actually many. Consolidation is easy for plantation type agriculture where uh, farms are large and are contiguous. And like in the case of Cavendish banana for exports compared to uh, the non-plantation farms with different crops like the farms under the DTI Rapid Project. But even with the Cavendish banana case, you see side selling, even with the tripartite marketing agreement, which is a legal instrument between the seller, buyer, and the financial institution. The commercial partnership agreement of DTI Rapid is similar to this marketing agreement, except that um, uh, the financial institution is replaced by DTI, the lead agency in implementing Rapid, uh, to provide interventions in various components of the project mentioned by Ruel, including matching grants and um, credit facilitation. However, based on our um, the information that we got, well, despite the CPA, uh, which indicates a percent level of production to be sold to the anchor firm, that's one of the terms and conditions, some of these farmer organizations, we actually talked to three, encounter challenges in meeting the target consolidated volume. One of the reasons for this is because part of the sales, if they sell to that uh, their FO, the farmer organization, that will be deducted to pay for their outstanding uh, loans with the FO. It would be good to explore, so this is my suggestion, effects of other factors such as logistics costs of farmers if they participate in collect collective marketing, price of al alternative markets, existing commitments with other buyers, example, loan from uh, traders, infrastructure, level of social capital, example, trust. Uh, however, uh, I did not see in the paper, in the uh, the baseline data on volume sold to or through the farmer organization or MSME or per market outlet if they sell to different buyers. Can, can we get this data from the baseline survey? Uh, the paper actually suggested to track compliance to the CPA. And one of the data or indicators to track this is the percent volume sold. Uh, based on total production for cacao, I know they they uh, they negotiate at least seventy percent of the total production. They have to sell through that uh, through the cooperative or through that partnership agreement. Um, if the data is not uh, 
yet monitored or collected, I suggest they should be included. Tracking this in the baseline and endline survey will be useful, including the possible factors that affect this. I think you have you have data for the other factors, most of them. I, I leave it up to Dr. Ruel on the appropriate uh, quantitative model to determine effects uh, of these factors, some of which I, I as I mentioned, uh, earlier. I also suggest to supplement this with case study, collecting data from key informants and focus group discussions, like what you did with the process evaluation, to capture narratives behind factors affecting uh, collective marketing. Let me share two examples of the projects we implemented uh, uh, further to, um, to further actually um, what reinforce the importance of clustering. One, one is an old example. Well, this is the Kalamansi consolidated by farmer cooperative from the organized clusters to, to supply to a large fast food chain in the country. Despite the interventions of the project to meet buyers' requirements, the clusters were not able to supply to the chain for a number of reasons, such as high logistics costs. And that is mainly the reason because they source from uh, Mindanao, Tak and CI Zamboanga. However, the farmers still benefit from the project and increase their income because the traders who used to pay low price before the project increase their buying price to secure volume. This increase in price is partly due to increased competition since the farmers are now able to explore other markets. We observe this too in the Cavendish banana market for export as competition increases with the entry of, of uh, buyers in the spot or non-contracted market, contract prices with large companies also increase. It, increase. These factors uh, can be considered in evaluating the rapid project. The other example is a more recent one, uh, on also in value chain, it just finished last month, funded by CHED, and was implemented, implemented in our land reservation area in Laak Davao de Oro. This is on cacao. Clustering proved beneficial to uh, the farmers since their income increased after implementation. Clustering enabled them to consolidate to meet the volume requirement of at least 300. So that's the requirement of the buyer. 300 kilograms, uh, which offered uh, this buyer offered actually higher prices. Aside from better prices, they were able to reduce their log logistics costs through collective marketing. The paper, it I think that's tw table 27, presented logistics data on the distribution of household respondents in terms of uh, uh, distance between the house of the respondent and the major market uh, trading service center and the nearest market, um, yeah, nearest trading center. My question here is how do you define the major market trader? Does the market outlet include um, consolidation centers of the FOs? of the farmer organizations. I think that's the takeoff point when you can assess the um, the CPA, for example. Uh, if you want to understand how logistics uh, like distance or cost affect collective marketing, then I uh, suggest we track distance or cost from the farm to the consolidation centers of uh, FOs or MSS, MSMEs. Aside from the points I, I raised on clustering and consolidation, and given the rich data from the baseline survey, including the data to be collected from the end line, and the expertise of uh, PIDS and the authors, I suggest to consider further analysis. For example, a disaggregated analysis by target group. Uh, I think they have three. Uh, the gender, IP, and youth uh, can be useful. This can be done using baseline and land data, particularly for key indicators like income, productivity, and cost uh, by chains. I think this is important to understand if there are distinct issues and oppor opportunities across target groups that may require adjustments in um, project strategies and interventions. For example, Rapid is, so I'm focusing on youth as an example. Rapid is targeting 5% of uh, 78,000 total target beneficiaries. That would be the, the youth. From my knowledge, despite this, um, the intervention uh, or this very low percentage, target percentage, it remains a challenge for DTI, for DTI project, for DTI Rapid project to engage the youth Insights from the baseline uh, by disaggregating target groups, particular for this, uh, for youth, uh, given these challenges, well, 
well, this is, this is a big challenge, the, our aging uh, farmers, your baseline data shows an average of about 46, I think, 46 years old. In fact, there's a proposed uh, collaboration between FAO and DTI Rapid in this area. Although DTI has um, the, yep, I think that's a youth enterprise program. Um, the project can benefit from this proposed collaboration since FAO has the module on uh, youth-sensitive value chain analysis and development. This aggregated analysis can help adjust approach uh, for this collaboration. There are other interesting analyses, uh, Dr. Will, that can be considered, such as the impact of value adding, particularly among farmers and MS MSMEs, product diversification, including agroforestry, impact of matching grant, etc. But before I make a longer list, let me conclude uh, by saying that uh, while I suggested more work for the authors, PIDS can explore collaboration to carry out this analysis with partners from the academe. We have a new lab in UPMIN. I think that was mentioned earlier uh, in my introduction. The Agri-Aqua Value Chain Laboratory funded by the OST Picard, which uh, started last year. The phase one actually started last year. Some of our researchers and partners um, are open to collaborative research in the Agri-Aqua Value Chain uh, issues. Again, um, congratulations for the authors for doing an excellent job in um, but squeezing out important points and analysis from the baseline data of uh, of the DTI rapid project. Uh, maraming salamat po.